Hi there and welcome to the Year 7 Information Evening. I just wanted to start by saying how impressed we've all been with the Year 7 start to this term. There just seems to be a really nice friendly atmosphere amongst the year group. Uh, they've had such a positive start here at Preston's and I hope that you're getting the same messages back at home too. This presentation will give you a bit more information about the school in general, about Year 7 and also about the upcoming trip to Fairthorn Manor. If you do have any questions at the end, please do contact us via phone call or email. Um, we do plan on holding a Meet the Tutor session in November, so more information will follow. But that gives you the opportunity to come into school and meet with your child's tutor on site um, and find out how they've been getting on, how well they've settled and ask any questions that you may have. As you're aware, our year group motto is Strive. Strong, take responsibility, respect, inspire, value and expect success. And our Year 7s have really embraced this from their first day at Precincts. They've already shown strength in overcoming the challenges of starting a new school. They're already taking responsibility for their own learning by ensuring they're organised and prepared for their lessons. They've shown a great deal of respect to all staff and to each other. They've been inspiring their peers by being the best that they can be and they are driven to do well. They really have had a fantastic start to Year 7 and I've been so impressed with their positive can-do attitude. Here are some quotes from some of the Year 7 teachers. As you can see, really positive. They've, they've been really impressed with their, their start and their approach to their lessons this term. At Priestlands, we're passionate about developing individuals. Although we know exam results do hold the keys to many things, we believe that school is about far more than just this, as our vision statement says. We want our young people to feel happy and safe coming into school. We highly value the partnership we have with you as parents and carers, and I'm delighted that you're here investing into your child's education. I hope you find this presentation informative and helpful. Over the last few years, here at Precincts, we've had a really strong focus on the principles of growth mindset. And it's particularly important for pupils joining us in year seven. We want our students to be in the mindset that they can achieve what they want to achieve if they put their mind to it. That it's okay to make mistakes and that it's by learning from our mistakes, asking questions and challenging ourselves that we will get results. Our Precinct's path to progress is sort of a visual statement of that growth mindset. It shows that there are hills and stumbling blocks along our way to success, but we use these to embrace challenge and make steps in the right direction. So communication between staff and yourself is going to be really important over the next five years. I've already had conversations with many of you and it's been really nice to get to know you and start to build that relationship. I know it's really different moving up to secondary school where there's multiple members of staff and teachers as opposed to that one teacher that your child would see all day every day and that you would perhaps have regular contact with. But we are here if you do have any questions, although it might not be instant, someone will get back to you if you call in or email. Um, most correspondents should go to your child's tutor in the first instance and they will decide who's best to respond and, and support you. If your child is absent, please call into the absence line and this needs to be done for every day that they're off. Please do not just call in the first day and assume that we know they're going to be off for several days. Uh, please do report that daily. Um, I know there have been quite a few queries about more than one parent being able to receive school information. And this is something that we know can cause problems at the start of year seven, but unfortunately, due to the local authority system, we only receive information of the person completing the school application. They're then automatically the primary contact for us. So hopefully you've now received a letter asking for any additional contact information, which you can respond to either via the Sims Parent app or on the data form that you would have received with this letter. So we can add those second contacts um, onto our system and you will also receive any school information. Now I know we use several different platforms at Precincts for different things and you've probably been bombarded with emails about them and information on these different apps over the last few days. It is a bit confusing um, but there is going to be a breakdown of the different apps and what they're used for in the latest Head Teachers newsletter so please keep an, out, an eye out for that but if you have any questions in the meantime please just ask. So other ways that you can keep in touch with what's going on at Precincts can be via the school Twitter account, the Friends of Precincts Facebook page or the Precincts posts which is posted onto the website. Um, 
We do know that parents like to start up their own Facebook and WhatsApp groups, and whilst this can have many positives, um, please just be mindful of what you post. There has been incidents in the past where these groups have caused some problems. To year seven can be found on the class of 2026 tab on the school website and the pathway to get there is shown up here so through parents year groups and then class of 2026 year seven so by now hopefully all of the year group have been set up with their show my homework account all homework will be set via this account online and you two can have access to this your child should have brought home an information sheet with a code that you'll need to set up your account. Please contact us if you haven't received this code. Um, this is a great way for you to monitor what homework has been set and when it's due in, so you can really support your child with this. If you have any problems accessing your account, please contact us and our IT team will be able to help you out. We generally say that Year 7 should not be spending more than 30 minutes on each piece of work. So if you find that they're struggling and getting quite stressed with this and spending far more than 30 minutes, please do contact their subject teacher and let them know. I think most of you are all set up with the school payment system Scopay. So this is where you can top up your child's lunch money and pay for trips and any activities. But again, if you have any issues with this, please do contact school and our finance department will be able to help you out with this. Okay, so I'm now going to hand you over to Mrs Yates, who is our line manager to Year 7 and the assistant head teacher. Thank you, Mrs Ritchie. I just wanted to talk a little bit about mobile phones. Um, I'm sure by now you'll be aware that we operate a strict no mobile phone policy during the school day. Um, that's between 8.45 and 3.05. And this is having a really positive impact on our students' social interaction, as well as giving them that, that break that they need away from their screens. Students are still allowed to have their phones with them, but they should have them turned off and in their bags until the end of the school day. If you need to contact your sons or daughters during the school day, then please ring the front office and we will get a message to them. And likewise, if the need arises for the students to contact home, we can also organise this. For some of our students, this may be the first time that they've had access to smartphones. So please, would you support us um, by establishing some clear routines and help them manage their screen time. For example, you may want to adopt a no phones at bedtime rule, as we know that the blue, the blue light that's emitted from the screen can have a huge impact on their sleep patterns. Also, make sure that you check for parental controls and settings on your internet to ensure that you are in control of, of the content that your child can see online, therefore protecting them from any harmful com, com, um, content that they might view online. Please also talk to them about appropriate use of mobile phones. Sadly, in the past, we have had some students who have received some unwanted communications via the use of some of the um, group chats um, or also in some some instances feeling very excluded from some group chats um, you know this is still people still feel as though they can do some sort of harmful bullying online and and some of those um, those uh, issues can come back come into school and we do spend a lot of our time sorting out conflict that may have happened outside the outside the school I'm sure you're all familiar with some of these apps and while we know all the fantastic benefits that they bring in terms of quick communication and creativity Sadly, there is a worry that for some of our students, they can be exposed to unwanted communication by strangers, um, clicking on explicit content, as well as the large tech companies creating complex algorithms, um, in particular on topics or interests that they may have, that in turn keep our students interested, therefore always increasing their screen time. We know all of the apps have um, age limits, with most advising that our young people need to be at least 13 to access them. So please keep up to date with the apps because as we know, they're changing, it's a very rapidly changing um, platform. 
um, and, but it's always always worth having those conversations um, to talk to talk to your sons and daughters about what it is, how they're communicating, um, so that you can um, make sure that you're that you're keeping them safe at all times. At Priestlands, we take internet safety um, really seriously um, and the students will receive regular information on how they are to behave um, safely and responsibly online. Um, and they will receive this information either through assemblies um, or as part of, the, of their curriculum through, their P, through the PSHCE programme which they will receive during tutor time. And this also ensures that the students have the up-to-date knowledge um, to keep themselves safe online. Um, we also have a dedicated area on our website, as you can see here, for online safety. Um, and we regularly post information on guidance about how students can keep themselves and others safe online. There's also lots and lots of information for um, and guidance for parents there. But I would also recommend a fabulous website called Internet Matters, which has expert advice and support um, that parents um, can tap into. They're always ahead of the game in terms of new apps. There's um, a great section on there about how to set internet controls and settings if you're a little bit unsure about that. Um, so I would definitely visit that. And you can find that at www.internetmatters.org. Um, as well as the um, dedicated area on the website, we also send out regular um, updates via emails or group call expressions. If we receive any information about anything new that we feel will be helpful, so please look out for those. Um, and also, you know, we're always keen to hear from parents. If you hear of anything that you think is a concerning, we may not have picked up on it. Sometimes you are um, you are ahead of the game or the students are ahead of the game. So please don't ever hesitate to call um, and um, you know hopefully we can get information out out to other parents. Just a little bit of information about our remote learning provision. As a school, we use Microsoft Teams for our remote learning and any students who will be needing to isolate will be expected to join the class remotely and work alongside the class from home. Um, we don't expect students to join if they are too unwell, but please do let the office know when they are well enough to resume their studies so that their classroom teacher can invite them into the lesson because obviously what we don't want them to do is the students get too far behind. Um, by now all the students will have received training and um, on how to access remote learning and how to navigate themselves around Teams and they all will have all have received their computer logins. But please don't hesitate to contact us if um, you're experiencing any difficulty with anything to do with our remote provision and um, I'm sure there's somebody here that can, that can help you um, resolve any problems. From the start of this term, the attendance for pupils is compulsory, which means that the usual rules on school attendance will apply. Therefore, we would encourage you to ensure that your child attends regularly. We really don't want the students missing out on any more precious learning hours. Some quite interesting statistics here. A student with 90% attendance has missed 10% of the academic year, which is half a day of a school week, four weeks of school across the year, 97 hours of teaching. And a student who has 90% attendance for five years will have missed half a year of her education. So if we compare the student of 90% with uh, someone with a, an excellent attendance of above 98%, someone with an attendance of lower 
than 90% achieves one and a half grades lower in all of their subjects. Some with an attendance of between 90 and 95 achieves one grade lower in half of their subjects and someone with attendance between 95 and 98 achieves one grade lower in a quarter of their subjects. So just looking at the figures here, you can see just how important it is that your child regularly attends. However, we realise that in the current situation, there could be some circumstances where pupils are unable to attend. And we ask that if your child is showing any symptoms, um, you must please inform us immediately um, and get an appropriate test. And hopefully it will be negative and which will enable them to return to the school really quickly. Um, however, if they do need to have time off, just please can you make sure that they are engaging with the online learning in a virtual way. Um, but overall, it's really, really important that you focus on your child attending school regularly. That's all from me. Um, as always, if you have any concerns, please don't have, hesitate to contact either myself, Mrs Ritchie or Miss Ainsley, our PSM, and I'll pass you back over to Mrs Ritchie. Thank you very much for listening. Finally then, some information on our upcoming trip to Fairfield Manor. So the A tutor groups, which are SJR, SWG, GF and RP, will be going for the day on Thursday the 23rd. And our Alpha Tutor Groups, OLH, CDH, JDR and BK will be going on Friday the 24th September. We will be travelling via coach, leaving school at approximately 8.45, so it's really important that your child is in school on time that day. Um, they'll meet us on Warden's Peace, which is where those who get the school bus would usually meet, but we'll make sure tutors and make it clear to them where the, exactly they need to go on that morning. So why are we going to Fairthorne? We do a residential trip every year and even when pupils leave year 11, they're asked the best part of their time here at Prusa and so many of them say that first trip in year seven. So it's a really valuable experience for them. So pupils will be split within their tutor groups. They're gonna be split into three groups, um, about 10 or 11 of them in a group all within their tutor. They get to know their tutor and other teachers, so they will, we're ensuring that their tutor will be able to spend at least one session with them throughout the day, and then they get to meet other members of staff as well. They use skills such as teamwork, communication, and that's a really key focus of the day. And they get to feel proud of themselves for achieving something that they may not have usually done, so if they're scared of heights and they make it up to the top of the, the abseiling, tower uh, and so on and it's obviously a, a really fun day out for them these are some of the activities that the students may may take part in so over the course of the day they will do four activities um, from the list below so abseiling kayaking fire lighting a team challenge climbing tower aerial runway stand up paddle boarding or the low ropes we do have, and we have asked you to provide us with information on their swimming ability and the members of staff will have that. They will all be expected um, and made to wear a life jacket. So please don't worry if your children do have some nerves or aren't as confident in the water. They won't be made to do anything that they don't feel comfortable with doing, um, but there are obviously strict safety measures in place. What to bring then? So hopefully you've all received the kit list from Fairthorne and um, they've provided a list of things that they need to bring. So casual, comfortable clothes, they will need to bring a packed lunch and there was a, a slip at the bottom of the letter for you to respond to if your child receives free school meals and we can provide that lunch to them. We just need to know about that in advance. So if you haven't already, please return that slip or get in contact with your child's tutor. Uh, a change of clothes, it is likely that they will get wet, uh, they like to splash each other, I know when they're doing the paddleboarding and kayaking, um, so something that they can travel home nice and dry on. Old shoes, it's going to be muddy, it's going to be wet, please don't wear your nicer shoes, and bring a towel. Medication, so this information was sent home in the letter, if there are any types of medication that your child needs to take throughout the day, please make sure that comes 
in a assigned packaging um, with clear instructions on it and that needs to go straight to your child's tutor first thing in the morning once they arrive and then we will ensure that that's administered throughout the day as and when needed. If there was an emergency or you desperately needed to contact us, um, for example if your pickup arrangements have changed for your child then we do have two trip phones going out with us. These numbers were sent home in the letter as well so please use these numbers if there is an emergency. So final things then to do is just to make sure you have seen the letter. It did go out in paper form and by email on Friday the 10th of September. Um, if you haven't got that, please contact your child's tutor and we can send another one to you. The payment was due on Monday, but if you can get that in as soon as possible, please via Scopay. Um, return any slips that were attached to the letter with regards to how your child is being collected at the end of the day and if you require a free school meal. And then just check everything is packed and ready to go for the day. Thank you for watching this presentation. I hope you found it helpful. If you do have any questions or want any further information on anything, please do contact us. Otherwise, I hope to see you soon. Thank you.